when an adolescent entered a hospital. She was filled with fear, confusion, and doubt about her decision. Her mother, a nurse, had coerced her into choosing abortion over giving birth to the unborn child. After performing an initial operation, the medical team waited for the stillborn infant to be delivered for five days. The baby's body had to be disposed of appropriately. And the teen's mother, a nurse, supervised the delivery. The other nurses carried out her directions. But all of a sudden the process was altered. Two nurses heard a faint, distinct cry while the medical staff was wrapping up the task of cleaning the birth room and tending to the body that had been left behind. The baby made the sound. Much to everyone's surprise. Despite being almost eight months pregnant, a 19-years-old college girl sought an abortion at a hospital in Sioux City, Iowa. In August 1977, she had felt pressed into taking this course of action by her mother, a nurse. Such a surgery would be incredibly uncommon in the United States today. In August 2017, Susan, a board member of the American Sexual Health Association and nurse practitioner, clarified that, generally speaking, a woman can only get a late-term abortion if her health is in jeopardy or if the fetus has a major defect. But there's no proof that the adolescent girl who sought the abortion in 1977 wasn't healthy. The fetus was left in the deadly fluid for five days after the doctors used an injection of a toxic saline solution to end the baby's life. Upon the adolescent's return to the hospital, the baby was delivered via induced labor. Instead of the normal happy scenes in the delivery room, they thought their attempts to end the pregnancy had been effective and were getting ready to deliver a dead child. The nurse who had coerced the adolescent into the treatment was there to deliver her dead grandchild, the mother of the teenager. But she recognized instantly that the baby was barely hanging on, particularly for the mother who had coerced her daughter into having an abortion. This was hardly the desired result. Two other nurses heard the baby's weak screams and laboring breaths despite the mother's insistence that the infant be left to die. These nurses made the decision to act because they could not watch a child perish. They hurried the newborn girl to the hospital's neonatal intensive care unit along with the rest of the medical staff. Even though she was fighting for her life, she had a long journey ahead of her because she weighed less than three pounds and had breathing problems, jaundice, and seizures. Her doctors projected various lasting problems and expressed doubts that she would lead a normal life. In the interim, her biological parents organized an adoption strategy in the event that their daughter lived. A couple who could be her adoptive parents paid her a visit as the infant battled for her life. They glanced into the incubator after being warned of her issues. And they fell in love with her right away. The infant started to get better with the help of her new family. Eventually, she returned home without any of the disabilities the physicians had anticipated. She was born Melissa Odin and lived a typical childhood. She didn't find out the details of her birth until she was 14. She was devastated to learn this. When I was 14 years old, it completely upended my life. She later said, I didn't want anybody else to know how much I was hurting. Odin went ahead and took charge of her life. Even if it hurt emotionally. She vowed to approach each day with an optimistic outlook. Inspired by her second opportunity. I have to be ready to get out of bed and admit. You know what? She vowed. I will not do that today. And then she actually did it. Odin surmounted insurmountable hurdles and struggled to comprehend them in a memoir she penned afterwards. 
she dug deeper into her history and found out who her biological mother was. She eventually made contact with the woman who had sought an abortion for her. She and her biological mother, who had thought her child had died 30 years ago, benefited from this communication. Odin set up a meeting between her and her birth mother in 2016. When she was prepared, Anger took a back seat to acceptance in this meeting. It was everything I could have ever expected and more. Her birth mother's profound shame and guilt over the 30 years she spent certain she had died hit her hard. The chance to meet face to face. The knowledge that her child was alive. Loved. And forgiven her. All of these had a great impact. I think my enthusiasm was more directed towards her than at myself. Yet it had a profound impact on my life. As soon as my eyes met hers, I knew she was there. My initial thought was probably something along the lines of, it's been a long time. Odin started the Abortion Survivors Network so that people who have been through what she did could have a safe place to go. She is now married and a mother. One of the things she wrote for Fox News was, I may have had that abortion attempt and been placed for adoption in secret. But I was not meant to stay a secret. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now, let's watch another similar story. An elderly guy approached the villagers while they were burying the twins and put an unidentified drink in their mouths. The next events were astonishing. Gabriel and Isabella were born on a cold Friday night. Martha, their mother, gave them a loving embrace and promised to look out for them. She was determined to teach her daughters to stand tall and not let other people's ideas define them, even though she knew they would be ridiculed due to her previous behavior. Martha pledged to nurture her daughters to be resilient, fearless, and self-assured. She was determined to make sure her kids' lives would be better than her own, even if she felt like a failure herself. Martha wanted her daughters to be married by the age of 30 and have all of their kids before the age of 35. She discouraged them from dating until they were 25 years old and constantly forbade them from ever fully trusting men or falling in love. Though she was unaware of the possible repercussions of her conduct, she thought that these regulations were shielding her kids from the mistakes she had made. The story starts roughly 20 years ago, when Martha was the belle of the hamlet at the age of 18. Martha remained unaffected despite the numerous wealthy men vying for her attention and going to great measures to prove their love. Rather, she developed feelings for Alberto, a 15 years old impoverished rural hunter. When Martha was 20 years old, she made the decision to come clean to Alberto about her emotions for him. A few months after they first became friends, they started dating. Although Martha knew that Alberto loved her less than she loved him, she didn't care. She was terrified that she might never experience such intense love again. Alberto thought Martha would be a perfect wife because she was kind, attractive, youthful, and obedient, even though he wasn't in love with her. He was sure that she would make him happy and calm down. He asked Martha to marry him one evening, and she happily accepted, looking forward to a happy and humorous life together. Regretfully, Martha soon discovered that their marriage was not at all what she had dreamed for. It was evident after a year that they were not compatible. Martha began to long for Alberto's affection and attention, but he refused to offer it to her. In addition, even though Martha's fertility was confirmed by doctors, they were unable to conceive. The cause was still a mystery. The couple lived in their modest house for many years, becoming progressively aloof and childless, almost like strangers. As word got out about Alberto's engagement with a young woman from a nearby village, he started to leave quite a bit. He occasionally vanished for months at a time. And occasionally he was gone for an entire year. He was still nowhere to be found three years later. At 40, Martha found herself alone and depressed. A business traveler named Sam arrived in the village at this precarious period. After meeting in the neighborhood market, he and Martha grew close. 
Martha was lured to Sam when he declared his love for her and that he would stop at nothing to win her back because of Alberto's protracted absence and lack of clarity regarding his return. Sam embodied all of Martha's desires. He was kind, kind and delightful, qualities that she hoped Alberto possessed. Because she was unable to control her emotions, Martha fell madly in love with him. They started an affair that was blissful and satisfying until Sam's neighbors informed Martha that he had permanently left the hamlet during her morning visit. There are no words to describe the agony she endured that day. Looking back, it's easy to see why Martha was so hard on her girls and would become angry if they were seen talking to guys in the village. Martha found out she was expecting a child barely two weeks after Sam departed. Gabriel and Isabella were born as a result of this pregnancy. Martha stayed firm even though some teased her for having children outside of marriage. After learning of the birth, Alberto made a quick return, collected his possessions, and then disappeared. Everyone was wondering why Martha hadn't gotten pregnant with Alberto, no one could answer Martha, but she was hellbent on shielding her girls from the pain she had felt, her actions were making their journey more difficult, and she didn't even know it, because Martha frequently kept the twins home to shield them from peer pressure, they had a boring youth and uneventful adolescence. She planned to wait until they were 25 years old before they started dating in the hopes that they would be old enough to know when someone was trying to take advantage of them. The secret relationship between Gabriel and the boy started when she turned 17. At the age of 18, Isabella did the same, beginning her own romantic connection. Despite this, Gabriel and Isabella didn't tell anyone, not even their mother, about their interactions, unfortunately. Martha's health deteriorated significantly two years later, and her doctor estimated that she had less than a year to live. While Martha was ill, she sternly told her daughters that they should wait to entrust their hearts to anyone until they were older and wiser. I hope you never have regrets about your life. She wished them a great existence and told them so one morning. Martha departed this world tragically only two weeks afterwards, despite her passing. The sisters continued to keep their connection a secret from one other. Signs of pregnancy appeared a year later, but the twins first thought it was the illness, even though they were very close, they were ashamed to confess that they had betrayed their mother's vow. Friendship visits were scheduled for a week after they found out they were pregnant, after Gabriel informed her boyfriend she was expecting. He extended an invitation to celebrate with her, so she was the first to depart. She had no idea that he was hatching a deadly plot. Gabriel went back to her house an hour later and discovered Isabella had gone missing. The sisters resumed their conversation when Isabella came back not long after, but they quickly became ill with severe stomach aches. Because of how bad the pain was, they thought they were going to die. Isabella choked out the words, I believe my boyfriend, Tom Marshall, poisoned me, sis. I am expecting a child. Gabriel, who was in unbearable agony, was astounded by what she heard, she was seeing Tom Marshall as well, Tom had lied to both sisters, she realized, he had been seeing them behind their backs and intended to hurt them when he found out they were pregnant, neighbors discovered the sisters in their room, appearing to be lifeless, a few hours later, the locals made the quick decision to bury them as no one could lay claim to them, Alfredo, who had recently turned 75, emerged from a nearby corner as they prepared to lay the caskets to rest, as he walked up to the caskets. The elderly guy opened each one and filled the girls' mouths with a liquid, the sisters started coughing within two minutes and, startled, sat up in their coffins, the locals were scared when their stepfather aided them, shouting that the dead sisters had returned to life. They ran away in terror, Alberto revealed to the girls later that night that he was their stepfather. He'd been keeping a covert eye on them even though he'd left their mother behind since he felt obligated to watch out for them after her death, though he had been waiting for the appropriate opportunity to come clean, he was aware of their relationship with Tom, he had seen Tom at the toxicologist's office just two days before, but he had not given it much attention until he found out about the girls' deaths. Alberto immediately acquired an antidote and saved their lives after realizing Tom's participation, luckily. Tom was found later on, Gabriel and Isabella went into labor nine months later, and each sister gave birth to a pair of twins, the twins knew they could do better than Martha, who had been a kind mother who did her utmost to protect her girls, they wouldn't be as strict with their daughters as their mother would be because it's acceptable to make errors and fail.
But just as Martha had taught them, they would also impart to their girls the importance of rising above one's circumstances and never giving up, sometimes the way to the light is through the darkness, after watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts, feel free to share your opinions in the comment section, if you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel, that all about today's stories, see you next time.